Do you see all the bubbles in that side glass? Well, they just disappear, but they'll come back again. And uh, don't charge by bubbles. Charge by weight only. We'll, we'll get back to the bubbles in a minute. We'll look at some other stuff here right now. So this customer is taking this. This is like the sixth video. Oh, there we go. Let's, let's take a look at the bubbles. Okay, let's wait for this to go. We'll eventually get there. Uh, if it doesn't get there, it'll get there. But I want to go off to something else. Uh, so we're uh, 45 degrees out of the dash. So this is a dark silver with black interior. And, oh, here it comes. Starting, starting. There we go. And we've been running constantly. The compressor doesn't shut off. Only the fan cycles. So you heard the first fan shut off and then the second fan. This has two fans that sync off and on. So how are you going to determine what's right and what's wrong when it's constantly cycled? So let's get back. Uh, let's see our outside temperature is 75 degrees. We've been sitting in the sun all morning baking inside. Let's, um, so you can see our humidity, 51 degrees humidity outside, 79 degrees humidity coming out of the dash, 46 degrees out of the dash. Sorry for the glare. Let's get over here. Now look at our superheat and subcooling. Watch those move around. If you cannot have a constant, non-changing, stabilized system, you cannot set a system by pressures or temperatures. This is where the manufacturers are gonna have to be mandated or get together to set up a standard where there's a test mode. Some vehicles already have this, but every vehicle needs a test mode nowadays with the way the systems are run, especially with the heat pumps and especially on electric vehicles. No more of this guessing shit. All right, so let's take a look at our pattern. Superheat and subcooling. See where I have that pressed right there? There is no way in hell Okay, this is the superheat. Look at that superheat. It's approaching 30. It comes down to six, and what are we? 20 something, 27, 26, 28, 28. So these are the highs and the lows constantly within like a 30 to 45 second gap. There's no whacking off the can and trying to come up with some average or some rule of thumb. That, that gotta go. Let's look at the pressures. So here's the pressure swing. So our pressure swing is going a low of, let's see, 180, 179, 179, and we're coming back down there to uh, approaching 179 again. And we go as high as 135. When I know it hits about 140, basically. Uh, there's a little time delay between what the pressure sensor can pick up and what it's actually doing. But that's the swing, and it's about every 45 second flow. As you can see on the low side, it barely dips from 30, to 28, 30, 28, 30, 28. So 28 is the low on the low side. And our saturation, 35, down to 122. So there is nothing steady and this is sitting in the sun. And you can see you get plenty of bubbles out of here every now and then. So what am I supposed to do? Now I know I have 1,050 grams in here. Where's my little sticker? Okay, what happened to my sticker? Oh, right here. So I know for a fact I got 1,050 grams in here. And actually I got 1,100, I got 50 grams more. And I'm still getting bubbles coming up in here. So I hear guys from other countries tell me, oh yeah, they say go up, to a certain weight or a certain pressure and then wait for bubbles and then put an extra 100 grams in or, or until the bubbles clear. Or when the bubbles clear, you keep adding it until the bubbles clear. Then I hear you add an extra 100 grams on top of that. Well, so if I'm waiting here and I know I have 1,150 grams, actually I got a little bit over. If I know I'm good and I'm waiting here and I'm waiting for the bubbles and I go, oh, I see a bubbles, so I should add more refrigerant. Okay, so now I have 1,200 grams. Oh, some bubbles came. 
so now I have 1,300 grams. Okay, the bubbles are clear and they're not coming up. And by some of these instructions, that I hear some of these guys telling me as my subscribers in other countries that I'm supposed to add another 50 or 100 grams on top of that after the bubbles clear. So let me put another 100 grams in. Well, how many hundreds of grams overcharged am I going to be? You see where I'm going with this? Now, here's another thing. On this particular vehicle, you do not solely rely just on the electric fans going off and on. There's also a thermal fan clutch back here. This is a mechanical fan. I believe this one is the original and it has 190 grams. And I can tell you a fact from a fact that it is not flowing the quantity of air that it needs to be flowing as if it was brand new sitting here at idle like it's in stop and go traffic or sitting at a stop line and somebody complains of uh, I'm at the stoplight or I'm in slow moving traffic and it gets really warm inside because this comes on and it allows the pressure to go all the way up to 220 or 240 psi before it kicks on the fan it lets it it lets it run away it's called thermal runaway it's going to the thermal runaway and in the really hot conditions it can never recover well how about if you never let it go into thermal runaway in the first time because the fluid fan clutch is working really good so if the fluid fan clutch is working really good up to a certain temperature the fluid thermal fluid fan clutch will take over and in some conditions on some vehicles you will never hear the high um, pressure fans even kick on because the thermal fluid clutch is doing such a good job but since this one is not it's totally relying on this and this is free spinning under these conditions and the guys go oh well but the thermal fan clutch i feel a lot of air coming over my hands it must be working good because the engine temperature is not going up the amount of air needed for the oversized radiators that they put for the engines because they don't want engines blowing up under warranty so the cooling systems are oversized in the first place so a lower airflow by a couple hundred cfm is not going to affect the temperature on the temperature gauge at all whatsoever but it will greatly affect the condenser because most manufacturers make condensers down to a size to keep them as small light and cheap as possible that they just work you just need to add another straw on there that break the camel's back and that's where it goes and that's why we're hearing this fan come off so much over here the electric one because this is not doing its job all right guys see you later i think that was enough for now i hope somebody grasped something out of this see ya